Okay, welcome back. So now we are ready to go into our performances folder and start to create some new MetaHuman animator, MetaHuman performances from any of our takes here. So we'll go ahead and call this MHP for MetaHuman performance. I'll just call it 01, real descriptive. And we're gonna open that up and it's pretty straightforward what we need to do here. We're going to pick the footage we want to use. So in this case, this will be the one I recorded right after my calibration, so take six. And then we have my identity, nice little thumbnail of me. We see the whole breadboard there of all the facial rig elements, pretty cool. And uh, by default right now, we just see my little mesh. Pretty, I do think it does look like my face, which is neat. And you can play through here, but of course it's okay, not going to so, uh, affect the skeletal mesh at all yet because we haven't processed it. So we you know, can do our little split screen and all that, but it's not going to be um, that useful yet. We are going to want to go ahead and process everything together. So we'll go ahead and press that button. And we're just going to speed through the processing that's happening now. But you can see that the live preview it gives is pretty remarkable. You can even see everything going with uh, the breadboard. If you do want to speed this up, you can turn off the real preview. Uh, you can also turn off things like tongue processing if for some reason that's something that really doesn't matter to you. Uh, I will point out that just sticking out your tongue and waving your tongue around isn't going to work. It does do a lot of the tongue movement based on the waveform. So just keep that in mind. And then as it starts to wrap up, you see it does a, a few different layers here of processing. It is then going to be able to uh, play back the entire animation right in here. And we'll see how it sounds. Okay, so uh, we're just going to do a very expressive test of MetaHuman Animator. Uh, I'm just holding my phone, nothing special. And uh, yeah, I just got to find a place here where, or I did find a place, I got to find a place, I already found a place that uh, has pretty good lighting, uh, not too many shadows, I got some of this facing me. And I'm just doing things like the tip of the tongue, the lips, and the teeth, because I want to see how well the tongue works here. Teeth. Teeth, teeth, and yeah, maybe if I keep my mouth open while I'm talking, we will get to see more of what the tongue is doing. I always just love ending with a little cheek puff, and uh, we'll see how all this goes. Cool. So you can Neat. see through all yeah. of that, I was just kind of messing around with changing what was visible. Uh, we can get that control rig breadboard kind of in there. We can see the uh, original uh, active tracking points if we want to. We can look at the depth capture. We can do all sorts of different overlays just to make sure that everything looks the way we want it to. And we could reprocess if needed, but I think this looks pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by exporting a level sequence. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put that in a new folder here, which I'm just gonna call sequences. And I'm gonna save it. And we're gonna see that there's a bunch of options for what we want to export. We can do the depth track if we want to, although you'll see that it doesn't look normal for some reason. Uh, we'll review that. Uh, and then we can also do the control rig. Um, we can export, you know, all these different elements. Do we want to do the whole range or the sequence? And I really like the default template of how this comes together. And while we're here, we may as well also look at exporting an animation, which is probably what you'll do in most cases, especially once you start to get a lot of takes, because really all you have to do is pick uh, what skeleton you want to use. And I would recommend picking an actual metahuman face, uh, ideally something that comes from the common folder or, you know, an actual metahuman face like Ada underscore face mesh or something like that. That way it will work with uh, as many metahumans as you might want to use it on. I'm not sure why the default option doesn't do that, but uh, do keep that in mind. And we can open up the animation and see it playing back here. All that curved data. We've also got head rotation here. And let's go ahead and take a look at what we've got over in our sequence that was created. You'll notice we've got the audio at the top. There's a camera, uh, there's a mesh, there's a depth track and a video track. We can't actually see the depth track right now, but still um, out of the box here with the camera and the mesh overlaid on top of the face. It's pretty useful just for the sake of comparing your actual data. So that video plane, if we just want to very quickly get the depth data going, we can go ahead and duplicate this rename it depth just to remind yourself what it's for, drag that into your sequencer so it's nice and spawned. And then we'll wanna go ahead and just change the material or rather create a new material so we can just duplicate both the material and the media texture. 
that are already there. And then for the media player there, we won't actually need one because it's already in the track. I know this is not a sequencer course, but uh, follow along here if you can. We're just going to change the media texture in our duplicated material to be a new one. And then the last thing we need to do here is go and change the depth media source to the new media texture. And then we also need to do that over here in the material. Now the bloom is pretty crazy, so we could go into the post-process volume and turn the bloom to standard and bring it down to zero. And you'll see that there's not really a lot of data there to read, and there might be a way to uh, make this, I don't know, more full. But that's at least the basics of getting that track over to here if you want to do it. And if we want to see what this camera view looks like, we can just snap right to it. Kind of looks like the uh, skeletal mesh just has my hair. Oh, and another thing I want to do real quick is go into the project settings and change the near clip plane. By default, it's 10 centimeters. Something like one will be better for when we want to get really close to our metahumans. And uh, we will have to restart for that to take effect. We can also affect the near clip plane inside of the actual cameras that we use. And then just playing this back at like 2400% speed, but just wanted to show very briefly, just going through a bunch of my other takes and repeating the same process. And it's just kind of fun to see uh, how everything goes through here, especially something like a Technoprops helmet. I'm just really blown away by the subtlety of everything. <laughs> I say as it plays back crazy fast. And now what I'm just going to do is bring over a whole bunch of metahumans into my metahumans folder. And I'm going to play around with some of the different lighting presets and just drag a metahuman in. And I'm fast forwarding through this because there's nothing uh, unfamiliar here to anyone who has worked with metahumans or sequencer in the past. Uh, but I did think it would be useful to at least, you know, talk a little bit through what I'm doing here, because my goal was to make sure that I could get a good side by side of uh, a metahuman and my face and my skeletal mesh, which I have not, by the way, been able to get to look uh, quite like me. My goal here was really just to get a metahuman side by side with my face and my metahuman DNA skeletal mesh. And this is just very briefly what happens if you don't uh, delete those async CVARs that I mentioned at the beginning, where the hair does some strange things. But as you can see, uh, I'm pretty much accomplishing the first step of what I wanted here, just a metahuman and being able to compare things like the teeth and my face. And I'm looking for subtlety and nuance uh, and all the things that I used to find frustrating about the Live Link face app. As amazing as it was, you know, really not complaining, but there is certainly a level of I, I was going to say uncanny, but it's quite the opposite of that. A, a very realistic, natural look to how everything is set up here. Um, so what am I doing now? Now I'm ready to start bringing in a lot more metahumans. So I've been dragging the metahumans directly into the sequencer so they all become spawnable. And then what I'm going to do is go into each of their uh, bodies and disable the uh, actual skeletal meshes except for the head. Now, at the moment I'm doing this in the outliner, it's actually gonna be much easier to do this in the actual blueprints of the metahumans themselves. Um, same thing with kind of moving everyone around in here. I wanna make sure that nothing is kind of snapping back to a point that is being set by something outside of the sequencer. These are all just like things about sequencer, nothing to do with metahuman animator. Uh, but yeah, I hope it's still kind of interesting to see me putting all this together so I can have all my metahumans, our talking heads band, uh, singing Kumbaya together. And you can see a couple spots where <laughs> skeletal meshes reappeared. And it's like, oh no, Farouk, I have to remove your body again. Uh, just so we could get everyone lined up here. Moving everyone around. Don't block my face. And then once I felt pretty good about my choir of heads, just started to play back and make sure that they're all receiving the same animation data. Again, as long as you exported your animation data to a specific metahuman and not the uh, default value, then all of them should be able to run off of the same data, despite the fact that everyone here has some pretty different head shapes. Uh, some of these were made with mesh to metahuman. Some of them are out of the box and they're all working pretty fabulously well. And now once again, purely in the interest of showing you how everything is set up, uh, I'm just going through and creating my camera, playing with the uh, the movement of who we see when. Um, one thing I did a little bit later that isn't captured here is also recording the same sequence out of uh, the movie render queue in lots of different setups. So that way I can mess with lighting later and just kind of lay all these on top of each other in Premiere. 
and change how it all goes. But I was really interested in the mouth, wanted to get real close to the mouth and understand the tongue. Uh, I've already put out another video that just kind of really dives into how impressive all the tongue animation is. And then we're pretty much just going to come up on the end of this video. Um, I hope this was helpful. I know we just very quickly kind of went over setting up a recording. And uh, then I just kind of give you a little bit of a peek at my sequencer workflow, but certainly 100% thrilled about MetaHuman Animator and the potential of it. And I hope to be doing a lot more with it soon. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm most active on Twitter at iBrews, and I'll talk to you more soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye bye. Okay, so now we're just gonna do a very expressive test of MetaHuman Animator. Uh, I'm just holding my phone, nothing special. And uh, yeah, I just gotta find a place here where I did find a place, I gotta find a place, I already found a place that uh, has pretty good lighting, uh, not too many shadows, I got some of this facing me. And I'm just doing things like the tip of the tongue, the lips, and the teeth, because I want to see how well the tongue works here. Teeth, the teeth, the teeth. And yeah, maybe if I keep my mouth open while I'm talking, we will get to see more of what the tongue is doing. I always just love ending with a little cheap puff, and uh, we'll see how all this goes. Neat, yeah.